Last week, I was at the Abu Dhabi Finance Week among industry titans and billionaires such as Ray Dalio, Jamie Dimon, and even other financial celebrities, Kevin O'Leary, Gary V. I was invited to go there by Itoro. Itoro was one of the strategic partners of the Abu Dhabi Finance Week, so they invited me to go there. I participated in a panel discussion. I was interviewed. So I was one of the speakers. If you look at the list of speakers among these great names, you'll see my name, my picture there. But if you told me seven years ago that this would happen, I would not have believed you that I started investing on eToro and that one day this was going to happen. So today we are going to talk about the future. Of course, we are going to look back at the past and to talk about the future, why I'm doing everything that I'm doing. And also it's going to help you because if you're following my channel, I believe you want to grow as an investor, you want to make money in the stock market, you need to know the why. Why are you doing it? The idea for this video came during a presentation, which was done by NAS Academy on how to grow your presence on social media. It was done for eToro popular investors. It was interesting. And the, then the lady that was presenting, she said something. She just gave a random idea how to invest uh, over the next 50 years. That was supposed to be a video idea. And then I thought about it. Okay, that's a great idea. I can actually make such a video. And here we are today. I'm going to talk about investing for the next 50 years. So why do I tell you that uh, seven years ago, I would not have believed that I would be part of the Abu Dhabi Finance Week? I wasn't just there as a participant. I was there as an active participant. I was invited to talk there, which is not something I would have thought possible seven years ago. Because I would not even have thought that I would be a popular investor and a lead popular investor on eToro. The main reason why I started investing was to have a side hustle, to have some extra cash. We need to go a little even back in the past, when I was five years old. This is a story many people don't know actually. I'm not so comfortable speaking my past, my childhood, but it's important to talk about it now because uh, because everyone has a story and we need to talk about our stories. So when I was five years old, I started uh, saving my money. Why? My parents were giving me pocket money to buy things at school, but I never wanted to buy any cakes or anything like that, any candy. I was just saving. And then every year, I was going to count how much money I made. Of course, I was not working. It was just gifts that you receive as a child just because you exist. But it did help me in the future. When I reached the age of 18, I moved to Russia to study physics. These 48,000 Mauritian rupees, which I had, everything that was saved from the beginning. So 48,000 Mauritian rupees at the time is about uh, 1,500 US dollars. All this money was money that I saved. And this was all everything I took with me. Today I'm very proud of this because most of the other people I know, their parents financed their studies. But I did not have this chance. When I was 15 years old, my mother passed away. And let's say with my father, we did not have the best relationships. So from the age of 15, I was almost on my own. Of course, I was still living under his roof, but the emotional trauma forced me to go out. I had to get out of this house. I had to get out of this country. So this is what happened. At the age of 18, I moved to Russia. And some people asked me why Russia? It did not really matter. Wherever I got a scholarship, I was going to move anyway. So I just moved. And it was my dream to be a physicist, to be a theoretical physicist. It was my dream since childhood. And this is where I was going. Of course, the relationship with my father got worse and worse. He got married twice. He did not even tell me about it. And at some point, he told me that he was no longer going to finance my studies or anything. So I had to depend on myself. Everything that I saved as a child since the age of five, I was using that to survive. I was using that to study. I got a scholarship. I was getting paid a stipend from the university. So that was on what I survived. It was in 2013, so 10 years ago that I moved to Russia. But of course I knew that eventually I would run out of money. And when you run out of money, you cannot survive. And I had no other choice but to find other ways to make money. And I asked myself the question, where's the one place in the world where money is literally created out of thin air? It's Wall Street. So I decided that maybe I can try trading, I can try make money in the stock market as a side hustle. It did not start that well, but eventually I got better at it. And uh, I became a value investor because I believe that uh, good investing is a long-term game. It's not about trying to make money in the short term. But never 
would have have believed that uh, other people would like my strategy and would start copying me. So how did it work? In the beginning, many people on the Itoro Summit asked me that. How did I become a popular investor? How did it work in the beginning? It was just me posting about what I was doing. Just that. I was very active on the platform. And I was learning at the same time. So everything I'm learning, I'm posting about it. And people are interested with what I'm writing. And they see that uh, my strategy is working. They copy my investments. This is how, in April 2017, I became a popular investor on Itoro. And at some point, I started making money on Itoro by being a popular investor. Of course, my finances gradually improved. Then we come 2018 and I decided that it was time to go full time. It was still my dream to be a physicist and I even got the offer to study at the University of Cambridge for my master's degree in theoretical physics and applied mathematics, but no scholarship. And the amount of money it costs, I said to myself, I can make that money in two years. And if in two years I still want to do a master's, I will do it. It took me three years to make that amount of money and I did not want to do MRSS anymore. So we reached 2021, GameStop, that made me famous. 2022, my father passed away. So I inherited part of a house. As I told you, he got married. So the lady inherited the three eighths of the house and I inherited five eighths of the house. I'm not going to go into complication why it's like that, but uh, I own five eighths of a house and I decided to buy the rest from her. I bought the rest from her. It's my childhood home. Normally, I should not be buying my own house, but uh, circumstances are like this, and I bought the rest of the house. So here we are today, from a child that was saving his pocket money, today I own a stock portfolio and a house that I bought. I never showed you the house. Probably next year, I'm going to go live there, so you won't be seeing the beach so often. And uh, I will tell you the reason in a future video. Now let's talk about investing in the future, the next 50 years. I never really wanted to leave the world of physics. So the idea at some point was to invest enough money to have enough money and to go into venture capital. That is to invest in new technologies that I understand very well. Because if I understand physics that well, so I have an edge over competitors. And that was something I really wanted to do. Unfortunately, the technologies that I'm thinking about are very far in the future. So it is not something that uh, I should be thinking anytime soon. So what should I do for the time being is just focus on my investment. Of course, Itoro is my main focus for now. This is where I'm investing. And then I have YouTube, I have my research platform. If you're interested, please have a look. All my analysis are there. But this is my main source of income. All the assets I'm managing, it is on Itoro. But at some point, I want to have my own assets in the management outside of Itoro. And it's to have investment exposure outside the public market. This is the idea behind it. Because if I could stay on Itoro, only on Itoro, it's simple. I don't have to think about hiring lawyers, hiring accountants, hiring brokers. So it's cheaper. That's why hedge funds charge so much maintenance fees. They charge so much because they want to make money, but also there are real maintenances, which on Itoro we don't really have. So I'm managing money for other people, but I don't have this maintenance. They are handled by Itoro, which would not be the case if I was running a hedge fund. So eventually I would want to have my own fund. Will it be a hedge fund, a partnership like Warren Buffett started or a holding company? I don't know. But if I'm thinking about the next 50 years, I would like to have a holding company like Berkshire Hathaway. That as long as possible, I will keep investing on Itoro, but I would also want to own my own company at some point, a holding company like Berkshire Hathaway. And it's not going to be limited to investing in technologies that are going to save the world. It's also going to be investing in companies that are undervalued because it's where you have the edge. It's what you understand. And today I can say I'm becoming a better value investor. I understand how to value companies. I have never bought a private company, but the idea is the same, the same idea of value investing. How much cash you put today and how much cash you're going to get in the future over the lifespan of the company. But there it's all about certainty when you're investing in a company that has been in existence for 50 years and you know the business is stable, there is more certainty of how much cash the company is going to generate over the long term, whereas you invest in a new technology, maybe it is not even profitable for the time being. If everything goes well, it is going to be profitable, but there's more uncertainty in how much cash the company can generate. But if you have your own fund, 
you can take money there, you can put it here. And it's not just about making as much money as possible. For the time being, yes, of course, uh, just investing on it was to maximize returns with the amount of risk I can handle. That's the goal. But if I'm thinking about the long term, if I'm managing like really at $150 billion, it's not about making more and more money. It's about actually having some impact in the world. Now to answer your question, how am I going to invest in the next 50 years? It is the same strategy value investing, but it changes, it adapts to new circumstances. When there is a business that I'm founding myself, a new business, let's say I'm founding a business in nuclear technology, and I have found this business now. There is a way that I can value this company as a private owner. There is a way that I can take the company public eventually, make money. But it all comes to business valuation, value investing. The only difference is that you have created the business, so you're investing in your own business. And there is one last thing. Whatever happens in the next 50 years, because there's so much uncertainty, in the next 50 years, I will be 79, I'm 29 today, and uh, there's so much uncertainty, nobody knows what will happen. The future is uncertain. There is one thing that uh, I have always done, and that would be my advice to you. Always bet on yourself. Never bet against yourself. All the tragedies, all the sufferings, I'm still smiling. Some people say, why are you smiling? I say, because life is funny. This is the way I see it. The probability of being alive today, of being a human being, of being able to record this video to live at, to live at the greatest time in history, the probability is so low that if you're not smiling, you're doing something wrong. I would suggest you watch this video about a business I admire a lot. AutoZone, have a nice day and goodbye.